Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're on the ground here in Ottawa with the H-Jet. And oh, does it look good. But of course, these videos are not always about the planes and how great they look. It's usually about how do we configure a device. So let's go ahead and jump inside. So here what you'll see is we've set up a new profile for our Microsoft uh, HJet 420. That's just what I chose to do uh, because of how the aircraft reports itself. So under profiles, I went and I took a previous plane and I just right clicked on it and I did new uh, profile from this. And then that allowed me to have a bunch of stuff already pre-configured and then I worked from there. However, for the Honda Jet, it is all custom LVARs, so we had to basically uh, redo everything when it comes to the autopilot controllers. If you're just looking to download the snippet, uh, we'll cover that real quick. So jumping in, click on any display button, knob, you name it. Just click on something. Come over here to the right hand side and you click on online snippets. When it appears, you now can come to the multi-panel, go to complete device and for only current aircraft. Now this should work for most people. If you just type in HJet, you're going to find Microsoft Flight Sim HJet multi-panel. Now I did publish it for all of the liveries that I currently have. Uh, this could change. So if you don't see it right away, uh, you may have to uncheck only for current aircraft so that it doesn't check that. Then you'll be able to search for HJet. Again, don't forget, you can't download the snippet if you're not on the alpha channel. If you're on release channel and you aren't on the alpha, you're not going to find it. All right. Of course, unless this is months later and now release channel is a higher number than 091246. So we click on complete device. We click OK. And when it asks us to replace all events, we say yes. We go ahead, we hit save. And as you can see, everything will now be assigned to it. Now, a lot of this should be accessible inside of release. Uh, so that shouldn't change things. You just have to make sure you do have your Elvar bridge installed. And if you don't, uh, that's under settings and you've got the configuration wizard and you can install the Spadnax LVAR bridge. You'll have to do this with the SIM shut off and then restart the SIM. So what you'll find is you click on the device and from here, you will have the first page that the selector is set to. Hence it says selector alt and then you can start assigning things. So here with the add event, you're going to find that there's the display value, the display mode, because you could turn display text off. And then you have what the tuner or the rotary encoder on the right hand side does when turned clockwise or counterclockwise. So what you'll see here is the moment we turn to the next setting, the UI disappears because you have to click on the screen again because now we've moved the selector to the VS position and now we're going to be looking at doing our assignments in the VS section. Each of the buttons has an independent selected and add events for both the LEDs as well as button press held those types of actions. On the right hand side, you'll have an auto throttle switch, which you can control. Now there is no auto throttle in the H jet. There is a cruise control feature. And instead of mapping flaps to it, I use this to get more controls because we don't have enough buttons. So here we're going to find things like yaw damper. So we can toggle the yaw damper by pushing up 
on the flap lever and on the bottom of the flap lever is where you're going to find the cruise control and so this is a really neat feature uh, that when you get up to speed and you're at altitude hold you are able to enable the cruise control mode and what it'll do is it'll use the FADEC to adjust the power of the engine setting so that it will maintain that speed. On the trim wheel, again, since I'm doing trim elsewhere, I thought it would be nice like the wheel is on the GFC controller. Uh, we're going to use this to control either um, vertical speed value or we're actually going to control the pitch value uh, when you're in pitch mode. Go ahead and jump into the first part which was setting up our altitude. So when you come to the altitude screen as we've talked about before this is using LVARs. So these are a ton of local variables that are running inside of the Honda jet. If you want to know how to use the data monitor to be able to monitor these LVARs and figure out how to use them watch the getting started new user video that covers the data monitor linked here. So what we're doing is we're displaying the value that the Honda Jet or HJet autopilot altitude variable is. So to do that we clicked on add event and we said we wanted to display a value. And it props up and says okay so which target well we're targeting the altitude setting so I never change that it auto populates and then we were putting what we wanted the value to be so he selected on the data and then I just typed in ALT and then I used the filter for LVAR to bring it down to only LVAR values that exist and I found the HJET AP ALT variable now if you spin the knob up inside of the sim, so if I go and I now increase that value, you'll see when we come back here, click away, click back on, it updates. So you can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard and it will update the value the next time you go to it. So it pulls in an update. So that's how I knew this is the right variable that I wanted. So we clicked OK and I didn't need to do any type of conversions or expressions to it uh, I didn't even need to worry about changing the default format and then we just clicked OK and that was gonna be it so as you see here that's all we had we clicked OK and away it went now for the turn of the we of the knob it was a similar type thing we needed to add an event so that when we turned it clockwise we wanted to change that data value because again this is using an LVAR so sending the altitude increment decrement events won't necessarily affect this LVAR so we chose to go with uh, change data value we use that same data VAR and we said we're going to increment it by 100 I didn't bother putting any limits on it but if you wanted to, you could. You may decide you want limits of minus 1,000 and you wanted a maximum of, I don't know, 43,000. I think the service ceiling limit is 41,000 on this plane. So we could have added limits and then those limits would allow it to, to hold off there. If you like using acceleration, you could enable acceleration as well and then set some values. So here what you'll see is what we assigned was that by 100 and we turned on acceleration and we said the threshold, which is three clicks, it's going to do a multiplier of times 10. So 100 becomes 1000. I set a max multiplier to 10. So I don't want it ramping up to higher weird values in multiplying by 12, 15, uh, or even less than 10. I want hundreds or thousands. There's a timeout of 300 milliseconds. So between clicks, 
as soon as you allow 300 uh, milliseconds to expire, it will go back to the single value increments. And as soon as you do three clicks within that time frame, it will start applying the multiplier. We then added an event, we did counterclockwise, and we set up the counterclockwise to now use the decrement instead of increment. And again, we set it up with the acceleration and the multipliers. And then we moved on to the VS. And here with the VS, we did something a little bit different because we need to use different modes on our display. And so what we decided to do is say that when the vertical mode enum is equal to zero, I want to display autopilot pitch hold reference in degrees and we multiplied the reason for doing a expression on this or a modified calculation right was because the pitch degrees are backwards so what the sim puts out when it's up it shows negative when it's down it shows positive which is kind of backwards so what we are doing here is by multiplying by negative one it will generate for us the positive value when it's supposed to be positive and the negative value when it's supposed to be negative. And then we hit validate and it tells us right now we have a slight pitch up attitude, which is what we see. So once we edited the expression, we also said, hey, we're gonna set the format to 0.0. .0. Then what we did for the display value, so we added a second display value is we said anytime the vertical mode does not equal zero, so when it's not in pitch mode, I want the display to always show me what the vertical speed value is currently set to. So then what we did was we set up conditional turns for our clockwise and counterclockwise events. You'll notice that we set a condition to check if the vertical mode is equal to two, then you're going to be increasing or decreasing the vertical hold value. So mode two means you're in VS mode. And we want to end processing so that it doesn't check the next clockwise turn because this one validated. If it doesn't equal two, it's going to skip over this one and move on to the next one. And it's going to do this until it runs into something that validates and it gets an end processing. Now the vertical speed, uh, I don't need it ramping up. So I have acceleration set to off for this. For the clock or counterclockwise turn, we implemented a similar thing, same value, only now we're decrementing by 100 and yes we want to end processing so it doesn't continue on because it validated. The next set of checks is going to look at the vertical mode enum LVAR and if it's zero so if we are in pitch mode we're now going to send these AS1000 so G1000 MFD nodes up events. Now understand this isn't an actual HTML event. This is a code event that uses the same characteristics as the model behaviors inside of the sim. So basically here nose up and nose down in this mode would be incrementing or decrementing the pitch reference. And so this still works in the model behaviors because that's what the up and down button is using on um, the up and down wheel. Now, we could have used this the whole time in both modes. The problem is, is it's incrementing and decrementing the VS speed by tens. So I intentionally changed to this mode of using conditions because the nose up and nose down was incrementing VS speed by 10 feet. On the pitch trim, we implemented the same thing, right? We added conditions, and when it's at two, 
it's going to go ahead and do vertical speed values. When it's a zero, it's going to send the nose up, nose down to implement the pitch values. So when we look at the speed display or IAS mode, this is where we've gone ahead in the display value. If, is, if airspeed is in mock, so the LVAR, this is the standard LVAR of the SIM, funny to call it standard, but this LVAR is consistent throughout Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's part of the base things. When that's a zero, it's going to display for us the autopilot airspeed hold variable, so your IAS speed. When it's a one, it's instead going to change to mock hold, right? It's going to show that variable. And again, because I can't do decimals on this display, it just shows zeros. We're instead multiplying by a thousand and then setting the display to four zeros as a means to show us that we're in mock speed. Now keep in mind, you do mock speed at the changeover and so this value is going to be substantially higher. So on a clockwise turn, it's going to send the speed var increment and it's going to send the speed var decrement on the counterclockwise turn. And keep in mind, uh, that speed var increment and decrement event will work whether the plane's in IAS mode or the plane is in mock mode. Good old heading, and again here we see the autopilot lock heading direction, and then we've got the heading bug increment, heading bug decrement events, uh, and so that keeps us going with heading. Uh, when we go to course, you're going to see that we've got two different values. So we've set it up so that when GPS drives nav1 is equal to zero, it's going to show us the nav1 OBS course value. When GPS drives nav1, so on our HSI, we're following the FMS, it's going to show us the GPS waypoint desired track in degrees. So this is, is going to be that same behavior where you can't change the course when it's magenta in the HSI and the value is always updated by the GPS. Nice to have. Let's do the same thing. On a clockwise turn, it's going to increment VOR1 and on a counterclockwise, it's going to increment VOR1 OBI decrement. Now you could go ahead and add some conditions here to check if you're on um, nav1 and it would send the VOR1 commands. You could check to see if you were on nav2 and it would send the VOR2 commands. Uh, but I thought I would keep it simple for this version. So now that we're done with the knobs, we come down to the buttons. So autopilot, button light, it's tracking autopilot master. So the default value uh, variable does work. And so that'll turn the light on and off with the autopilot. And it does use the standard autopilot master event. So with a short press, we're gonna toggle that on and off. With heading, we are looking at the horizontal LVAR. So the HJet is updating its horizontal and vertical modes and it has an LVAR for us. And so we need to reference this so we don't get a conflict with how it needs to run the SIM autopilot under the hood. So no different than working with a Fenix, a PMDG 737, working with uh, the working title CJ4 currently. Uh, this is how these have had to use and leverage the systems uh, with what they have. So mode one is heading mode. So when it's a zero, it'll be in level mode. When it's a one, it's in heading mode. So if it doesn't equal one, turn that light off. If it equals one, turn that light on. For a short press of less than one second, it is going to increment the heading push by LVAR by one. And what you'll see is because this is a toggle button, instead of having to have two different conditions, the other trick is to take that LVAR, increment it by one, set limits, so zero and one, because it's a toggle, 
and then allow rollover. So when I press this, if it's already a one, it will increment it by one. And since it's not allowed to go to two, it will roll over and set it to zero and thus turn off the button. So when you see that turn on, lights up, we press it again and the light goes off. So there, that's the same thing as doing a toggle. Now some people have done mode conditions. So they check if it's a zero, they set it to one. If it's a one, they set it to zero. But then you're putting in two with conditions. This is the way to do it with a single event. For our long event, we are sending the AS1000 PFD heading sync. Notice again, this is a key event. So this is using the same model behavior where it's not actually an H event. It's doing that similar lookup of looking at heading indicator and then assigning that value to the heading bug. So really, this isn't so much the AS1000 as it is any heading sync. And that's why it works. Even though we don't have the G1000 in this plane, it's because it's not actually sending an HTML or an H event. It's actually setting a variable for you. On our nav button, we literally took the heading, we copied, we pasted, we changed the value from one to two so that the light will turn on because two is the nav mode. And then for a short press, we change it to incrementing the nav push button. When we go to the speed, similar type thing, we're looking at mode three that turns the lights on and off. And then we've got a press for a short period. So again, we're taking flight, uh, flight level change pushed Elvar, incrementing by one, we've got our rollover. If we hold it for a long time, a similar increment event, uh, but we're gonna be toggling that Elvar for airspeed is in mock. So we wanna flip flop the Elvar between mock and IAS mode. Coming next to altitude and our first vertical mode. So this vertical mode is going to check if it's a one. Zero is pitch, one is altitude hold. If it's not a one, turn it off. If it is a one, turn it on. Then your button press for a short period of time. This is doing the altitude pushed LVAR increment by one with rollover. Next we come to VS button. It's checking that the vertical mode is not a two, turn off the light. If it is a two, turn on the light. Same thing, VS has a pushed LVAR and we're incrementing this to one or zero to turn it on and off. Approach mode, there is a uh, horizontal and vertical mode that it can track. I have left it for the uh, horizontal mode. When horizontal equals three, uh, this will light up and generally you always capture the horizontal first so it's fine that that goes out and then as soon as when you're in say altitude hold as soon as it transitions from altitude hold into glide slope or glide path captured uh, that light is going to go out and only approach will be lit up so it works perfect and then same thing hjet approach mode armed there's an LVAR for this and we're incrementing this with a one and doing the rollover and allowing that value to also be set back to a zero, not a problem. With the reverse button, again, I don't really do back course uh, approaches. What's more important is VNAV and the HJet has its own custom VNAV implemented. So it's the first G3000, G5000, aircraft in the sim to have its own VNAV. And so we're using the reverse button. Again, we're checking the vertical mode and vertical mode of four is VNAV. And guess what? This VNAV will do climbs and descents, not just descents. Pretty cool. So again, we're toggling the VNAV button value LVAR. So this is linked to the same one that we would use with say a working title G1000. 
Over here on your auto throttle switch, since there's no auto throttle, we're using flight director and flight director only has a toggle. So here we use the condition of checking the state and that way if it was a one, so it's already active and we set this to the on switch, it's not going to send the toggle event. And then when we turn it off, if it's not a one, then it's not going to send the toggle event. And so by using these two conditions, we can still send toggles. We already covered this, but you've got the yaw damper. So being able to turn on the yaw damper down on the paddle is the cruise control speed. And then, like we said, we've got the pitch trim and how that works. So that's how everything's set up. Now let's jump back into the H jet and let's do a quick demo on how we can use this. So here we are, we're loaded in. We've already got our flight plan set up. We're doing the Ottawa 4 departure off of runway 25. Then we're gonna pick up the Elixu 1 arrival into Billy Bishop. We're gonna pick that up at Lorca, uh, which is the first waypoint on the arrival. Uh, and then our plan was to go ahead and jump into our approach, uh, which is going to be the RNAV 26. But first, we can leverage this awesome piece that he added. So let's go ahead and let's say that by Lorca, it's far enough away, we want to be at 22,000 feet. So we'll say we'll get to 22,000 feet. So now we've got our first restriction and it's cool. You can see it calculating our VNAV for us and then it can use the arrival as to where the top of descent would be. Now, if you look at your chart, you'll know that at, whoops, you'll know that at D sub or do sub, I should say do sub, we need to be at 14,000 and then Ukpeg is uh, 7,000? No, I think it's 8,000. Trying to do this real quick off memory. Uh, Miram, I think, is 5,000. And then uh, Vipri, uh, 3,000. And then Volak, we would be at 2,000. Uh, Desgu is 2,000. Whoops, backspace one. And then Alegi is actually 1,700. That's the FAF. So that's where we're going to be at is 1,700 uh, at Alegi to pick up our RNAV approach. So by doing that, you can see it has created our top of descent in our VNAV. So we wanted to get this all set up so that it's good to go. So now what you'll see, which really neat is of course we can come over here and we can dial up our altitude and you see you've got that acceleration happening, which is great. So if you spin really fast, it jumps by a thousand. So there I've got 15,000 put in, right? But if we enable VNAV mode, it's going to follow our VNAV to our restriction. So right now we've got 15,000 in, so it would actually stop at that 15,000 restriction, which we can see right over here. But we want to go up to 20, 2000 and so we really should set it to the exact same altitude uh, so that our VNAV is set up. So as you can see the VNAV it'll work right off um, right off the get-go. So on this departure we're gonna fly runway heading so we're gonna put in heading mode we're gonna go to heading mode and currently our heading isn't aligned so we're gonna go ahead hold down the button and it synced our heading bug. So we're gonna fly two, it's actually 251, um, but whatever, 
fly heading of 251. We're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead, and our flight director obviously is on. We're set up, so we're going to go ahead and make sure our flaps in place. And parking brakes off. And we're in takeoff power. And we can hit the toga button. So we get our flight director for our takeoff pitch up. And again, all of our lights go out because we're in takeoff mode. Now, you could choose to set some lights to blink. Maybe you want um, heading or VS or something to blink. So there we are, we're off the ground. Let's go ahead and ooh, get our wheels up. And we're gonna go ahead and get our yaw damper on. So yaw damper goes on and we can pitch ourselves over. There we go. Go ahead and get the autopilot on. So let the autopilot fly since it's about setting this up anyway. So now that we've done that and we're on our way, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch into nav mode so that it picks up the FMS, which it's done. And so now it starts its turn. Now it's still in that 10 degree pitch up attitude. And at this point, if we wanted to, we could of course change into say speed mode. So we could change to speed mode at this time and we're gonna say we want to speed up to 220 knots. So it's gonna speed up to 220 knots and we'll just pull the power back a little bit into MCT. So now we're climbing, it's pitching for 220 and we are on our way. Of course, like we talked about, really cool is we can also go ahead now at this point and put ourselves into VNAV mode instead. So if we go ahead and we say put us into VNAV, now we light up in VNAV and we're climbing with our VNAV profile. And so this is gonna keep us on profile and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna climb to 22,000 maintaining that VNAV. Everything else works if we wanted instead to be in VS mode, right? We can look at our VS, we can say we wanna go into VS mode. So away it goes, it's gonna to go to zero to start as it should, but here we go, we're gonna say, hey, I wanna climb with 2,000 feet per minute, or 2,100. And now we're going to obviously start increasing our speed uh, as this plane can do that with this amount of power. So if we instead change that to say 3000, there we go. We're climbing uh, with 3000 feet per minute. And obviously our speed is up there around 247. And so we can maintain 3000 but now we're going to be reducing our thrust to try to keep our speed from going up into the barber pole. So now we jumped ahead. You can see the VNAV has switched over to altitude capture mode as we got within a few hundred feet and the VNAV profile leveled us off. So here you can see our speed is now, of course, starting to really ramp up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our power back a little bit. And I kinda wanna get to a point where it feels like we're stabilizing the speed and it's not getting too fast on us. So maybe around here, we're going to try to get to 260 and stop speeding up too much. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press down 
and you see CSC come on. So this is the cruise control system it's got. Uh, that comes on in green. We see it light up. Uh, and now what it's going to do is you'll see here it's adjusting the power percentage on its own through the FADEC to try to maintain that 262 knots that it captured. Now we should be able to just dial that to 260 to make it a nice round number. And then what we're going to see is to get down to 260, it adjusted its power output to 78.8, and now the speed is there. And as little changes and adjustments need to be made, the FADEC, as you see, is jumping around. Now it's jumping up to 79.1 uh, to keep that speed on the 260s. So now it's going to 795. So it's slowly incrementing and decrementing and managing it almost like an auto throttle but again this is a range of speeds and there's some conditions that are required to achieve it but yeah that is really a bunch of the cool stuff i wanted to show you of how we've got the logitech panel configured how to operate it what's controlling the leds and yeah one of my favorite neat little cruise control features uh, that's not really in any of the other jets that don't have a true auto throttle. So with that, we're going to end the video right here. I hope you liked it. If so, please do hit that like button, smash the subscribe, join up on the channel so you can come along with us as we do more H-Jet videos on the Bravo, the TCA setup, the Alpha, you name it. We've got a pile of controllers that we've done configurations for. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.